Okay, uh, so it's uh, now my great pleasure uh, to uh, introduce to all of you uh, the next presentation, uh, which will be done by uh, Professor Muriel Ladik. Uh, Professor Ladik, she's an architect and doctor in philosophy with a very uh, precise and particular expertise on Japan, Japanese aesthetics, architecture, uh, a lot of publications on the, on the subject. So as we were saying before with Sebastian, it's a very good transition from uh, the uh, originating myths and mythology of Western architecture, now we move uh, to, to Japan. Uh, professor Ladik, she's a, a professor at Aachen University in Germany, and her presentation will be dealing and exploring uh, moon in Japanese aesthetics and architecture. So Professor Ladik, uh, please be welcome, and the floor is yours. Okay, so thank you for the invitation, and sorry to be online again at the others. Uh, and uh, what else? Although I'm French, I don't know if I speak in English or in French. Uh, what you prefer? Uh, I prepare both, so uh, I can switch from English to, to French if you prefer. And I will also try to share my screen. Professor, it's fine if you do it in English, uh, if you can do it uh, as you feel more comfortable. But if it's okay in English for you, that's totally fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's needed. I will make in English. We're making French. Um, I also want to share my screen. Yeah. Okay, so I will go very far away uh, to Japan, so another country. I'm also very far away from the myth uh, of the cavern that we just see before and um, uh, a different context. Uh, a different uh, country, far, far east, Japan, but also far away in time, uh, because I also refer a lot to medieval time in Japan. And, um, well, let's say that uh, somehow uh, very different from our Western appreciation for the luminosity of the sun, uh, the contemplation of the moon has been celebrated in Japan by architects and poets. So uh, the contemplation of the moon or tsukimi in Japanese appears as a light motif in painting art and architecture. Um, in this paper, I would uh, first discuss the history and genealogy uh, of this abstract uh, of this attraction for the moon. Uh, in the country, secondly, the semantic aspect of the moon uh, on reflexivity and reflection and maybe philosophical aspect, but I will go a bit faster. Uh, if needed, I will come back in French to this part. Uh, thirdly, the moon contemplated uh, through actually renewed architecture or deliberated uh, architecture or even sometime in uh, rustic hermitage. And in the fourth part, I will come to the architectural device uh, that was set up in Japan to take the maximum advantage of the mood natural observations, uh, notably so, uh, the famous Katsura Villa and its platform for contemplating the moon, Tsukimi Dai. And at the end, I will go a bit into contemporary art, so a very uh, rough uh, story. Uh, first of all, this interest of the moon was already present in Chinese poetry very long before it appears uh, in Japan. And the moon was also uh, taken as a metaphor for the beloved or for the distance between two persons which uh, loves its brother and creating a virtual triangle. So we already speak about geometry, but then it's a virtual triangle between the two lovers that communicate uh, symbolically over poem and exchange uh, beside a uh, long distance. The moon is there both near and far, far away in space, uh, yet it appears identically for all human beings. We all see the same moon or sometimes it's changing, but we almost see the same moon. Uh, and this is this, um, well, special virtue that the moon um, will be used 
in the Chinese poetry or in the Japanese poetry as um, a kind of metaphor for the loves and the relation between two persons who are distanced in space and time. Um, I took that, that idea actually from um, um, a Japanese art historian, whose name is Kozen Hiroshi. So the moon uh, contemplated by poets was associated with famous place in China, such as uh, Mount Wonshang or Yellow Mountain, Mount Lu or many others. And uh, it was related with painting and poetry. Uh, similarly, in Japan, it was associated with famous place. There is a pretty tons of image. I chose just one for this Ogre Lake, actually late uh, 18th century, but there is many, many examples of those images. Um, and between this famous place, one was Osawa Pond at the Tai Daikakuji Temple in Kyoto. Uh, and um, in this, around this town were a famous place. So related to this idea that in Japan, you have uh, repetitively this uh, famous place association. And around this town, which is uh, built as a walking gardens, um, she's in Kayuki Taihen in Japanese. Uh, it was a tradition uh, coming from Heian period, probably so medieval time from the eighth century in Japan, uh, that were many uh, ceremonies uh, accompanied by sometimes uh, poetic uh, jousting or uh, with singing and poetry and dancing all together. And in this place, uh, there were a famous villa built uh, by the Emperor Saga, uh, first for himself and then translate transmit light to others uh, belonging. Uh, in this place also Daikakuji, it's a direct references to a Chinese uh, place uh, on the model of the Dongqing Lake in China, uh, which is also famous among poetry. So the Mong gazing or Tsukimi literally means the first one, Kanji means the moon and the second one means seeing, so the way of seeing, the way of seeing the moon uh, become a poetic um, effect or a repetitive effect. Uh, in this famous place of Daikakuji was also uh, a kind of celebration um, which is related with the autumn or the harvest moon uh, for the 15 days of the eight months. So approximately in October of no days, but in ancient uh, lunar calendar that was in use uh, actually in Chinese, in China and in Japan both. So the moon viewing is associated uh, to poetry uh, aspect, but also probably before uh, related with the changing of the season and the cycle, and also uh, the cycle of the harvest, the rice harvest, of course, and the renewal. Um, contemplation of the moon uh, is not only the full moon, but it's also its incompleteness. And it was also mentioned in many poems as a seasonal term, or Kigo associated, the moon is associated with the autumn, as I said, October. Uh, but it is also appears in poetry in an incomplete part, as the poet Yoshida Kenko is very sensitive to the valid moon, which is partly shaded by uh, the passage of clouds. And I quote, uh, so this uh, poet, Yoshida Kenko, uh, rather than the spectacle of an immaculate full moon shining over a thousand place, it is uh, the approach of dawn, its expected appearance, uh, that streaking blush pallor glimpse deep in the mountains at the tops of cedars through the foliage or behind the curtain of a shower clouds that arose 
an emotion like no other. End of quotation. So in this sense, Kenko emphasized the process, the preferences given to the beginning or the end rather than a finite and unchangeable result. So not only the full moon, but also all is different aspects. And in Japanese aesthetic, probably the beginning suggests and contains, in essence, the germs of, of what it what is it to come, or uh, while the end evoke what was has been just just before, but it's no gone, the not yet, uh, and the already plus so um, and. Uh, it is about uh, capturing an ephemeral beauty just before it fights away, or uh, this idea of a beginning and the end uh, of the cycle, which is more beautiful than, uh, than the object in this finite aspect. Uh, and the moon and the reflexivity, which is a bit the second part, uh, but also I go a bit faster in this part, with a, a lot of philosophical background and Buddhist background on it. Uh, the moon uh, only gives us an indirect light, a reflection of the sunlight. Of course, we know that nowadays. However, long before science was able to explain this phenomenon, uh, the moon had a profound attraction for humans. On this theme of reflections, uh, semantic association brings us to a dialectic between image and reality, a bit of different sense than we have just seen uh, in the Japanese uh, context than in uh, the Platon context. Um, there is a kind of ambiguity in the whole uh, Japanese aspect between uh, the real world and an imaginary world from dreams, in Japanese you say you make for the dreams, and the reality, Genjitsu, but what is the reality? Uh, many Japanese poems and paintings evoke the reflection of the moon on the water. However, this is only an illusion. And the light motif of the moon and its inaccessible reflections appears uh, in Chinese and then in Japanese painter as an image and even a metaphor. Uh, thus, the famous motif of the monkey plugging its horn or its finger into the water to try to catch uh, the fragile lunar disk. It's found in, in Chinese painting, but it's also taken in this painting from uh, Hasegawa Tohaku at the point in temple uh, in, in Kyoto. Um, if the image of the moon's reflection in the water is an illusion, then all images are illusions, as maybe all reality is an illusion. In French, maybe also in English, uh, there is a semantic and phonetic proximity between uh, reflect, reflection uh, from uh, the Latin uh, reflexus and reflection from Latin reflexio. And also uh, bringing it to uh, the verb refleter uh, or to reflect uh, Latin reflectivity with a double meaning, firstly to reflect back in a different direction and secondly to reflect on oneself to collect oneself, but then by extension, probably to think, to cogitate, to concentrate, uh, et cetera, on the more um, um, abstract meaning. And uh, surprisingly, in, in Japanese, there is a semantic proximity uh, between the verb uh, utsusu, utsuru, and there is actually a different kanji to, to write it, even it's the same sound, it's a su. And you will have three different meanings. I didn't put the kanji, but 
Uh, which, so the first will be to transport, to transfer. Um, and there is a reflexive verb, utsuru, uh, to transport oneself, to be transferred. And then the same utsusu uh, would be to reflect, but more like a kino, like a movie. Uh, uh, and to utsuru is to reflect in water or in a mirror. And then you have another um, kanji utsusu to copy, to reproduce. You will use this kanji for photography, for example, uh, and utsuru to be photographed, to be projected. So in Japanese, there is a proximity between reflection, displacement, and transfer. Finally, utsuroi and utsuwa, which is um, let's say a bowl of tea, but in a more um, in a more large sense, uh, the receptacle. I don't know if you say that in English, receptacle en français, or in a concrete sense, a container or vessel, of let's say a bowl of tea. But you can see also a kind of continuity between the, the round form of a, a bowl of tea like, like this one and the round form of uh, the moon and maybe also the round form of the emptiness which is something which is coming up and up into the Japanese uh, philosophy. I will switch to the next uh, uh, part uh, which is uh, the moon, but the moon appearing in poetry and the moon appearing in, uh, sorry, my image is not so good, so I go to the next one. Um, the moon appearing um, as a light motif in the poetry, also in the light passing through the remain of the dilapidated architecture. That is actually uh, the core of my thesis where we're focused on this aspect in Japan uh, of the, um, let's say the interpenetration between the inside and the outside that we also speak a bit before. Uh, and actually the transparency, which is a characteristic of the figure of the ruins in the West. And these figures are echoed, uh, uh, find some echoes in the topos of the Hermitage Pavilion in Japan, with its uh, collapsed roof, where the light of the moon penetrates into the cracks. With the rings, the appearance of the roof and the disappearance of partitioning the, the different layers of device, architectural device, with this disappearance of this device and partition, uh, the gaze penetrates inside the space, just as in this scrolling paintings, the makimono in Japanese, seen in the plugging accelerometry where the roof is seen as it being torn by the wind, fuki no yakai. So the moon line, penetrating through the broken roof of the Hermitage Pavilion becomes a poetic topos. However, precisely with the collapse or the partial destruction of the section of the wall, uh, we move toward an interpenetration and an integration of the artifacts of the ring building into nature. Uh, so the ruins and also the transparency of architectures um, provokes the interpretation between uh, interpenetration uh, between inside and outside. So the light motif, my, my image is not so good, sorry. The, the light motif of the moon entering the interior of the abundant house appears even more prominent uh, during the 18th century. In the brush of uh, Ueda Akinari, uh, this is their name, uh, in his tale of rain and moon, uh, Monogatari, which is a theory of nine fantastic tales, including a short story uh, with the name um, 
or houses in the reeds. Uh, in this story, the narrator returning to the place where he had abandoned his wife nearly seven years earlier, um, at first believed to see her again under the shadow of night, under the brilliant and fantastic light of the moon, he then sees a woman of fabulous beauty who leads his sense at street. Unfortunately, the next day in the early morning, he realized that it was only a dream. This is a ghost or a demon uh, that laid his sense at street. Uh, the house he thought as found intact during the night is no a rinse covered by vegetations. Um, I made a quotation, but maybe a little bit faster then um, to say that um, in this abandoned place, the narrator finds only desolation and everything is lost. Uh, there is many, actually many occurrence of demons or um, oni or yogai in all uh, the Japanese literatures. But what is uh, the meaning of this story? Well, this may be according to the teaching of Buddhism or according to the mujo, the terms which means impermanence, uh, all things are done to disappear. Thus also, Weda Kinari in this story, he reinterprets many classical literary sources in his story, uh, such as the very famous Genji Monogatari that he almost directly quotes. So there is in, in Japanese literature, let's say in this way, a work of quotation that you would put in, in a more contemporary terms, sometimes intertextuality, I mean, reference to other texts or other temporal layer of interpretation that are uh, superposed. And this different of, of, of stratas, different layers of writings uh, would lead the readers to be able to understand this different uh, layers of quotation. Then the new, new layers of transport can be seen through the beautiful film, uh, the same title, Tales of the Waves After the Rain Moon, Obetsu Monogatari, which is directed in uh, 53 uh, by Mizuguchi. Um, and uh, Mizuguchi films play with ambiguity, Kiara uh, Ot so sorry, uh, where the main character has trouble distinguish between the true and uh, the untrue, um, and the lie between a simulacrum and reality. During those walking dreams, uh, he would see a beautiful lady, beautiful and perverse woman, who is actually none other than a ghost or a demon following the same uh, actually narrative from framework as with Akinadi. And so I show maybe some images of this film from Mizuguchi. Uh, we which bring a poetic universe uh, where the past and the present enter with um, dips of the nice give off the vaporous atmospheres pursued by froggy clothes uh, sailing on troubled waters where at time, sometimes the moon still appears daylight by clouds, maybe in a similar way that I showed before. Uh, with uh, Urabe Kanko. And there you see some short I text that uh, the man is coming in this beautiful house uh, where he will be received by a beautiful lady and everything is shortened by night. 
supposed to be shot in by night and with uh, only the light of some candles. Um, not sure, of course, also all the body. Um, this is again a night view from this uh, supposed to be beautiful place. And then the scene of seduction and dancing of this woman. Um, then she become more in this real aspect of a demon. She get angry. And at the end, uh, the narrator uh, be back in the present time and it will be in the dead time and then discover that place you have found or they have imagined in this dream uh, as something that was only a simulacrum dream by a demon, by this beautiful woman, which is actually only a demon. And I go back to this image or snapshot um, of this um, amazing film, and that will be the transition with uh, the fourth part, which is more on architecture, we were coming to it. Uh, and you see in the background, maybe you don't see it so, so well, but I realize it's kind of copy of a very famous place uh, in another um, situation in Japan. Uh, it's like uh, the shell, we call it the shell of mist of the Shugakuin Imperial Villa, where you have many fragments of text actually uh, from position of poison clouds that are coming in golden parts and also some images. And I think uh, the, uh, the film of Fueda Kinabi is almost quoting this part or reproducing it uh, in this beautiful palace or supposed to be beautiful palace. And I just put that um, small uh, image of Charlotte Perriand in 41, making some sketches of this uh, wonderful or amazing place. And then making translation, uh, doing herself a shelf of mist uh, later on in, in another translation, but that's another story. I come more to the device, the, the fourth part of my lecture, which is maybe more for, for you, more easy to, to catch, uh, which is the contemplation of the moon, Tsukimi, and architectural device related to it. So many round window or doors are, are actually um, can be found in China. Uh, for example, in, in a very um, famous place uh, where Chinese scholars, gardens, uh, build their own small hermitage in the city of Shuzhou, uh, located in uh, Jiangsu province. Uh, you would have gardens, so Chinese gardens with round doors or successive uh, round uh, window. There are, of course, some metaphors uh, from for for the moon for the moon view. Uh, in Japan, I chose both example of the Shisendo, uh, uh, which is. Uh, found uh, in the middle of the 17th century uh, by the intellectual and poet uh, Ishikawa Joza in the northeast of Kyoto. And um, this place has a special space, you see on, on, the, on the picture maybe, I don't know if you see my cursor, but yeah, on the roof. Uh, you have this uh, very special place, which is dedicated to the nocturnal, nocturnal um, observation of the moon. Um, and you can also admire this for its informal and let's say rustic character. Um, the name of, of, the, of, the, of this tower is Shogetsu Go. And it means uh, something like gazing, gazing to the moon. And as I said, it was built by a poet, it was a mitage. Nowadays, it comes to be a temple, a Zen Buddhist temple, 
but at that time it was used mainly by these poets. And there is description of this building um, where it is said that uh, in this place for contemplating the moon, uh, there were also many writings and books and poems in this small rooms. Maybe you can compare it to a studio law in some way. Uh, this is an, another image from uh, this building, Shisendo. Before it was called Shisendo, meaning a hermitage of poet, it was called something like a concave and convex building. Uh, because it is supposed that you erase a part of the earth uh, to get also uh, the building of the gardens and also how to build a river, how to build artificial rivers or probably how to canalize the water in order to get uh, the reflection of the river. Um, another very famous example could be taken in the garden of uh, the Ginkakuji, uh, Temple of the Silver Pavilion. Uh, you called it also Jisoji, uh, which is, means the Temple of Shining Mercy. And there you will find uh, a good example of uh, what you call actually in, in Japanese karesansui, so dry landscape. And uh, the record sea of silver sand is also very famous for reflecting the light of the moon. So again, like a light motif of the light of the sun, but the light of the moon is more important. Uh, walking through the garden projects you into another world, uh, the moon being associated with dreams and art afterlife. This um, large dry, Silver sound symbolized probably the sea somehow, uh, in which the light of the moon can be reflected, and of course the uh, truncated uh, sand cone, and maybe another geometrical uh, object can be taken as a metaphor for the uh, Fuji Mount in miniature. Finally, I come to the core of my uh, speech, which is the Katsura uh, Vela, which is a Vela very famous because it is built uh, somehow in order to see the moon or to see the, the, the moonshine. Uh, and uh, the, the, the name actually of the Katsura, Vela uh, is associated with the Katsura tree. And actually, I put it uh, there, uh, a quotation from the Kenji Monogatari. Um, we'll not uh, read it all, but the moon is clear and the Katsura tree shadow is the rain. And it's a quotation of the Genji Monogatari. So uh, medieval time uh, novels are written by a woman uh, that come to a reinterpretation for this imperial, imperial uh, villa built in the 7th uh, century. Um, the very name of the villa Katsura is associated with the Katsura tree, um, a Judean tree with moon leaves uh, that uh, a Chinese legend would associate with the moon. It's based on an analogy, it's supposed to be based on an analogy between the round, round leaves of the trees and, of course, the round shape of the moon. Um, there is also a legend that a Katsura tree somehow would be growing on the moon and by sinking to the moon, you will associate it to, with the Katsura trees. Uh, Katsura is also the name of the river, Katsura Gawa, which is uh, flowing just nearby the villa. And of course, a part of this uh, river water will be used uh, and uh, channeled to create the artificial ponds and the gardens. 
uh, the construction of the detached Katara Palace is associated with many literary reference uh, which are borrowed both from classical, from the Chinese literature, such as the anthology of Pai Junji Boen, but also a lot of reference from Chinese classic, from Japanese classical literature, just as uh, the tale of Kenji that I just uh, quoted. Um, thus, uh, maybe I'll still say like this. So, um, also a new interpretation of uh, the Katsura is also from uh, Isozaki Arata, um, so postmodern architect. We say uh, Katsura can be seen as a textual space in which one may detect a polysemy of architecture, so ended of quotation. So there is many, many reference into uh, this building, and one of them, of this chapter, uh, the wine in the, pin, in the pine, uh, Matsukaze of the Genji Monogata. Um, probably the Katsura Villa is considered to be one of the most accomplished and most commented upon example of um, Japanese architecture and its interpretation has given rise to numerous writings and uh, the subject has been analyzed by a book from Inoshe Shoichi essay. We speak about the reinvent myth of Katsura Villa, which is written only in, in Japanese. Uh, while commonly the myths of the rediscovery of Katsura Villa has been attributed to a German architect, Gunnar Taut, that you all know probably, and who visit first the villa in 33. And there were uh, probably uh, other sources such as Kisida Hideto, who writes uh, Katsura Villa just before as early as 29, but I will not venture too much into this story. And then you will have a book uh, which is published later on, so the 60s, uh, by Gropius, Tange, and Ishimoto. But actually, Gropius and Tange, you know, they are architects and their writings. And Ishimoto, uh, Ishimoto Yasuido, uh, is a photographer, and they will do the picture of this book in a very special way or particular way, and somehow uh, giving the ground to the idea that, um, or in the continuity of what Bruno Trout would say, uh, giving ground to the idea that there is a kind of modernity into the Katsura Palace. Um, what is also very special in this Katsura Palace, it then this very famous platform, so here uh, shot by uh, Ishimoto in the picture of Ishimoto Yasuido, uh, this very famous platform for contemplating the moon, Tsukimidai, uh, very simple, just uh, in front of the water. And of course, in the water, you would have uh, the reflection of the moon again, not the moon itself, but its reflection. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the, the the platform for contemplating the moon is located in the extension of the Kosho Inn, so the first building, more ancient, and it was built uh, at the very beginning. And it is probably the most uh, better, the best example of the aesthetic of this attraction of the moonlight. A specific uh, space then, um, somehow an architectural device uh, consisting in a bamboo covered platform beyond the Engawa, it's just, just only dedicated to the contemplation of the moon facing the lake and uh, most probably at the time intended 
for poetic justice. There is also uh, some evidence that there were also some boats all around the sea lake, and you would have uh, some special evidence, of course, for only for the aristocratic persons, uh, to go for writing poetry, looking to the moon, and uh, maybe some sort of uh, competitions. Um, so in this book, uh, I showed you before uh, from Tange, Ishimoto and, and Gropius. What is interesting is also that the building is not show only like a traditional showing this could be building like a medieval time uh, building, but it is also taken as an example of early modernism that give also rise to the myth that modernism uh, with its value of lightness of and modularity, uh, where was embedded in Japanese culture long before its invention in the West. Um, just so there is also uh, the Geparo Tipadium, um, which means waves and moon tower, which is dedicated to the contemplation of the moon and its inimitable uh, reflection of the water. Yet, actually, for the common man and woman like you and me, unfortunately, we will not be allowed uh, for a night tour in the Katsura Villa. There is a film produced by Enashka, which was shot by night, um, with a special agreement of the office in charge of Imperial Villa, but I'm not allowed to show it because I don't have the copyright. And uh, these films offer a fantastic view night of Katsura Villa. And you see that uh, the entire building is built in order to contemplate the moon uh, in a way that its rise and its height of the building, uh, as well as its uh, symmetrical reflection on the surface of the broad pond, is really calculated. So the entire organization of the villa with its diagonal offset, so asymmetrical representation, is really made so very different from our church, which are oriented for the sun, let's say. Uh, the Katsura Villa is set for the contemplation of the moon uh, during the autumnal equinox, so in November or October. Uh, and it is therefore built in a southeast axis, uh, slightly uh, shut off from 19 degrees in order to really admire the moon uh, in its entire way and the way that it's rising and setting. Other details may catch our attention, such as some Mika powders. Uh, that is in use in, in the printing of uh, Japanese paper, Fusuma papers, sliding doors, and uh, which is uh, printed with the uh, Amoria, the colony of flowers. And then um, it's sheathed again an indirect light, uh, the reflection of the light of the moon in the candle. And the moon, the character of the moon, Tsuki. Uh, can be also the emblem of the Katsura Palace, uh, which is um, then still is it in many other places of uh, the world. Bruno uh, Taut also visiting uh, the, the place was really much impressed by this uh, moon terrace, so the, the terrace for looking to the moon. And uh, he was uh, writing that uh, visiting this place, it was almost uh, cheering. Uh, I mean, uh, having weeping and um, having tears uh, on, on this appreciation of the moon. Um, of course, 
Um, I go now to the uh, last part, which is the contemporary art. Uh, and um, of course, also I quote uh, from the very famous 33 books from Tanizaki Junichiro that you all have read, probably, uh, usually architect and, and student of architecture read this very famous uh, essay in praise of the shadow in A. Eisen, uh, which is translated into French, Hello de Long, and into English, praise of shadows. And uh, it's uh, de Londres, non pas l'office de Londres, uh, a scholarly apologized for darkness, aim, uh, and uh, appreciate the darkness in his so uh, clever. So, uh, Tanizaki, as you know, emphasized that the whole spatial, spatial and, and architectural device of the Japanese house with its sliding panels, covers with semi-transparent papers, so shoji, and its total opening toward the, the gardens, which bring inside and outside, and sometimes also its other clo closures with a wooden shutter, uh, amado, uh, that are also a system to completely close the building. And, uh, this the different degrees of layers of the Japanese houses, of the traditional Japanese houses, uh, provide with successive skins and envelopes, uh, maybe somehow like uh, the the body, how the body will be used and covers, offering different degrees of light and shadow, and many various screens to have different shade of shadows or shade of gray. Um, Tanizaki described his aesthetic experience, including, of course, the beauty of the lacquer, a Japanese lacquer, which has many, many layers, and its beauty can be appreciated with a very weak light, maybe like the, the, the light of the candle or the light of the moon. Um, and I quote Tanizaki, in fact, in can, it can be said that darkness is the indispensable condition for appreciating the beauty of lacquer. Nowadays, we have come to make white lacquer, but the surface of the lacquer had always been black, brown, or red. So many colors that constituted a stratification of I don't know how many layers of darkness, which made, one, which made one think of some materialization of the surrounding darkness. So, and the quotation in this beautiful book of uh, Tanizaki, um, he emphasizes the beauty of the lacquer applied by the Japanese craftsmen in successive layers, creating this effect of depth. Uh, and also there is another techniques of lacquer where you would have, you would, would you will use uh, some red lacquer first and then black lacquers. And then with the use, a bit like Tanizaki described with the use and the repetition of the using, um, somehow the red lacquer will appear behind uh, the, the black one and there's a special effect. So Taniz Tanizaki appreciates the indirect light from paper lantern or moonlight as a very special aesthetic flavors of somehow uh, the Japanese aesthetics in it. Uh, I don't know if I have still time, so I go to my conclusion and present uh, some uh, projects I made, uh, not as an architect, but as a curator uh, for the Nuit Blanche in Kyoto, so also with the French embassy, with uh, some French artists, and then Patrick Foyer and a Japanese artist, Makoto Ofule, uh, which was held uh, during the night, so Nuit Blanche. 
but, uh, kind of Japanese interpretation of the French Nuit Blanche. And we had this exhibition uh, with the same, we had several places in, in the city actually at the same time, but we had this exhibition on uh, the shadow of time, Jika no Toki, the Kodokan in Kyoto, uh, with this collaboration uh, between Japanese and, and French uh, contemporary artists. And also we, during the, the night, we had uh, uh, no place, I didn't show photos of this, no play in situ, only with the moonlight and with candles that were uh, displayed. And that was a kind of uh, chance to, to have this project in Kyoto. Um, and then during the exhibition, Materiality and Immateriality in the Kyoto DVD gallery, which are uh, actually dedicated to, uh, of course, uh, Jean-François Lyotard and this material. Uh, and we had some part of materiality aspect and some part of immateriality aspect and the part was about 3D printing uh, from the moon made by a designer, uh, no senior actually. Uh, and he made this project actually uh, after the big uh, earthquake and tsunami from um, elements, so three elements. Uh, this moon, as a symbol of hope and rebirth uh, that commemorates, uh, of course, the huge full moon uh, that rays uh, in, in, in the sky just after the terrible event of three uh, elements. So as you know, tsunami, earthquake, and nuclear accident in Fukushima. But no senior works these moons evoke the image of the crater of the moons, but also the idea of the renewal and hope for reconstructions, uh, which is a kind of idea associated with the moon that it's a cycle and that it will always come back over and over. And uh, in the exhibition we created together with Axel Soa in um, uh, Neues Museum in Nuremberg uh, in uh, 2017, uh, we had also a project from the Atelier Bau uh, for prototype for the reconstructions, uh, which were completely uh, sent by boat in, in a prefabricated element uh, of Japanese cypress and then uh, re uh, reconstructed on the site um, for architect and, and so and, and new person which were actually um, uh, available for refugee after the destructions of um, such uh, event. And inside this house, we had the moon from no senior. So let's say for architect and designer, the moon, both one and many. So sometimes the full moon, but sometimes many other shape is, is a symbol of a constant renewal. And um, yeah, for this exhibition in Nuremberg, actually the picture is very light, but we had also a very interesting light effect, completely dark and some spot. Um, from a light designer, German light designer, um, which is uh, Sandra Lawrence. I go to my conclusion. I don't know how with, with, um, with time. Uh, I just show a small uh, poem quoted uh, from uh, a Buddhist monk, uh, Dogen. So the reflection of the moon, uh, but also uh, somehow the philosophical background of it. So uh, to my conclusion, the attraction for the light of the moon is a constant through Japanese history, which ran through painting, poetry, architecture design, and even contemporary art. The moon has a poetic and metaphorical dimensions that touches all being the uh, 10,000 being, uh, Basho, which are quoted here in the uh, second line of the 
the, the discussion of Dogen actually mentioning another Chinese uh, thinker. Uh, the poetic and aesthetical appeals of the moon is so important that then a real architectural device is dedicated to it. Sometimes there are round windows uh, which allows to look at the moon and while writing his poem. But Katsura device, which is a very simple bamboo platform passing to a pond, is perhaps the most fascinating because of its simplicity and horizontality. Uh, the platform is a surface in which the light of the moon is reflected. And the man or the woman, the individual, the person, the spectator standing there is only the receptacle again, uh, the one who receives the light, the one who was subjectively composed a new poem in the continuity of those that has already been written by others. So that's the conclusion for my talk today. I hope I was not too far and if you want to ask question you can make it in English and in French I would be pleased to answer thank you Oops. thank you professor Ladik for this uh, fascinating presentation uh, are there any questions from the audience yeah uh, Hello, uh, yeah. thank you for presentation. And uh, it was so interesting, uh, although I'm Japanese. So I have <laughs> one question. And uh, what's uh, the most different point about uh, for seeing the moon and then dark and night between Japanese and uh, Europe? And then how different? Good question. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question, but very huge. Um, to put it in some words, uh, we had uh, actually also in the poetry, uh, I read some poet, poem from uh, Rilke, so Maria Renée had We had in poetry many depiction of the night, probably of the noon, but it's associated in Europe maybe with a kind of sadness or dark side. So maybe it's the previous uh, previous presentation from others we were focused in in, in into European part could port more answer than me. Um, but what is very special maybe from from Chinese and from Japan as well is that it's coming uh, the appreciation for the moon is really coming from a long, long time before. Uh, and um, so it's more encouraged into, uh, into the, what do you say, kokoro, into the earth, uh, into your, what is beating in you and uh, where it's um, it's coming from long time. So, and this darkness is perceived as something positive, whereas in Western side for a long time, maybe changing uh, for a long time, the darkness is perceived as something negative. And um, in, in, in the Japanese aesthetics is not perceived as something negative, it's something perceived that in the darkness or it may be, uh, yeah, you would go to enlightenment. So it's strange to say that in the darkness you go to enlightenment uh, because you, you say like satori illumination. So the, the moon or the moon viewing or sometimes there is representation of hermitage and people that would pray uh, looking to the moon. Uh, it's not antithetic. And as we have seen in other presentation in European language or uh, in, in philosophy or in architecture, the light is associated with the 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 the, la verité, the, 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 the reality, the, the throughness. You will find the through part. But in the Japanese context, you would be able 
to find the pass because it's a pass. You will have a long time exercise to find the pass, uh, and you will you will do it in the darkness. So that's really different. This association with positive or negative aspect. I don't Thank know you. if I understand correctly. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you. I think I uh, I also have a question for you. And yeah. I will benefit from the fact that we have Nobu, who is a Japanese student, also in the room. Could you could you please go back to the slide where you showed this image uh, and this uh, painting, monkey monkey trying to catch the reflection of moon in water? Yeah. If you can okay. go back in your presentation uh, to the slide where you presented uh, monkey trying to catch the reflection of moon in water. Okay, I'll try. I, uh, yes. Yeah, you I, want to. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, actually, I was wondering when uh, you showed this, I have seen other images of this painting, which are a bit bigger, in which we actually get to see a bit of the water, but yeah. we don't see the reflection of the moon. We only see the water painting in the painting. Yeah. And actually, if uh, if we read it, uh, there are the kanji there, uh, but in, in, in Chinese, if it's, uh, if it's read in Chinese, uh, there is no uh, mention to the to the word reflection, so uh, it, it doesn't appear like in the. And I was wondering if you read that in in Japanese in kanji, like the title, is there a, a mention to the word reflection? Uh, you are right, actually. Because I... actually, in Chinese, the direct translation of that would be monkey tr trying to catch the but moon, the moon yeah, in water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right, and actually. I, I translate the reflection of the moon in the water, but actually it's trying to catch the water. The monkey don't know that it's a reflection, of course. Yeah, but it's it's quite an important uh, difference <laughs> because in the painting also the moon is not painted. So the, the fact, since the painting is dealing with the confusion between reality and illusions, as a matter <laughs> of fact, uh, it makes a whole difference because reflection and even the the painting of the reflection and the word reflection already implies a, a mediation. So it's, it's already an illusion. So it's very explicit that when you, when you uh, reflect something, the, the thing which is being reflected is already mediated and therefore there is an incorporation of the illusion itself. Whereas if in the image there is no the moon reflected and if the, in the title there is no the word reflection, uh, yeah. it's, it's more... It's more um, it's more ambiguous, so to say. And I was wondering how you confront to these, uh, how to say, uh, nuances of translations and specificities of language in your in your own work, because it's uh, it's all the more critical, no? Like to deal with all these precisions of Japanese culture uh, uh, embedded into the language, so to say. Yeah, yeah, you, you are totally right. Actually, I cut a large part of my speech, which were in French. Um, uh, but on this part of the, the reflection, um, you are totally right. Actually, I, I translate catch the reflection of the moon in, in my uh, um, Western brain. But you're right that the, the, the monkey is trying to catch the moon. But actually, it's also something that an illusion that we all are monkey so somehow the monkey of course don't know that it's a reflection monkey will try to catch the moon the monkey catch, try to catch the moon in the water but there is no moon in the water mm -hmm. of course it's an illusion so that's the point that's we are com we are confusing uh, between the reality and uh, the the illusion, maybe it's quite similar to what Platon wrote about the, the cavern and the illusion with the fire. Yeah, yeah. Except that now it's the moon, uh, and uh, and the whole Buddhism uh, philosophy will work in in this sense. Actually, I, I I cut a lot of my speech to this part, which was bit too much complicated to translate into English for me. Um, uh, but uh, for example, um, oh, I should say that it's it's really this illusion uh, that uh, that is that is not the reality. There is another saying from Dogen that when you 
uh, when you see a cake and a painting, uh, you still have hunger. Are you still? Are, are you still have hunger? So the representation is is a distance, and uh, somehow uh, there is no way to to catch the the reality. Uh, but um, what to say that? Um, Yeah, uh, there is another saying from um, uh, from Dogen, uh, who said that the, the the moon in the surface of the water is only uh, a surface of projection. So, as you say, it's a medium, an, an intermediate medium of transfer uh, that is used from uh, an object of, of transition or tradition. So. Um, um, well, it's difficult for me to, to make it in, in, in English, uh, but it's also, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's kind of illusion. Uh, the monkey is trying to catch these illusions and you can say, we are human being, maybe we're monkey too, or maybe we're human being and you, we see the monkey is trying to catch the, the, the moon in the water and we don't do the same. Uh, but somehow we also do the same. And so the moon uh, will be used uh, into Buddhism philosophy in many uh, different layers. Actually, the last, uh, the last poem I, I quoted from uh, Dogen, uh, this one, uh, is a kind of poem that, uh, well, what, what is it? What is it? The moon is there and it's giving light. Uh, but also, if the light disappears, does the, the reality is still there or not? Or um, there is other uh, classical stories, actually, uh, also in the, in the Chinese background, uh, where you have also um, a kind of mirror. Um, representing to the, the reality and uh, the question of is this mirror um, is clean or not so the in this sense uh, the moon is perceived like a mirror uh, but this mirror can be also a sign of um, knowledge a place of knowledge but also a place of emptiness. So, in many other uh, Buddhist contexts, um, the moon will be associated to um, to uh, to emptiness, but also to a kind of uh, of perception. So, I don't know. In French, you would say "polir la lune et labourer les nuages." Uh, which means to polish the moon and cultivated clouds and something like that. So, well, it's something that you are looking for something beyond the reality. So, I, I don't know. I, it's difficult to answer for this. No, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it, it shows that uh, there is a lot of content uh, to, to discuss about. I think we could keep on uh, discussing. It's a fascinating topic. Uh, but the, question, the, the reply was very precise in any case, so thanks a lot. Uh, are there any other questions or should we uh, go for lunch? Uh, and in any case, uh, Professor Ladik, uh, a real pleasure to have you here today. And hopefully uh, next time we will be able to have you uh, like not virtually, but uh, but really at Head Geneva. Um, please stay stay tuned and keep in touch with the institution. And uh, maybe Roberto wants to add something before we go for lunch. Just a communica general communication for all the, the people that presented this morning. Uh, please, uh, you can continue to follow, I, as I hope. But what is important, please come back uh, at... Uh, Four, I thought that I don't remember. For the anyway, at the time that is um, the program uh, where we will have the round, the final round table with all the participants. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, bon appetit.